Okay, so you know about um, translations and rotations now. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the translations are cumulative. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, if we execute uh, a method, if we uh, call the translate function and pass in 100, 100, um, that will move our 0, 0 point in our coordinate system to appear on the screen uh, 100 pixels across and 100 pixels down. So we can draw a, a little dot at that point. If we plot a point at 0, 0, that will appear on screen actually at 100, 100. So hopefully you understand that that's how the translate um, works. So that's all fine. But what happens if we subsequently, after this, call translate again and pass in 2020 and then draw a point? You might think that that point that we draw at 0, 0 would appear 20 pixels across, 20 pixels down. But actually, because translations are cumulative, it will actually appear at uh, 120 pixels across, 120 pixels down. That's just how translate works. And often that's useful. Um, and often it is not useful. Um, so there needs to be a way to kind of manage this process so that we don't, um, as we use more and more translates in our code, we don't end up getting into all kinds of weird and uh, wacky uh, problems. So let me show you an example of where um, that can be a problem. Uh, so we are, of course, going to go back to our fabulous polygon drawing method. Nothing about that has changed. But what I'm thinking is, well, I'd like to make some nice uh, wallpaper for my, um, for my processing screen. And what I want to do is um, draw a bunch of polygons on the screen. Let me say 500 of them. Um, with a random number of sides between 3 and 12, uh, with a random radius between 20 and 60 pixels, and translated to kind of be all over the processing window, um, and just sort of filling it up with lots of different polygons so that we get a nice polygon wallpaper effect. So I want to draw 500 different polygons with um, different number of sides uh, at random places on the screen. So I might write some code like this, okay? Set up method, sets the size of the screen, yep, good. We call no fill because we want our shapes not to be filled in. We want them to be uh, just the outline. And then we have a nice little for loop that counts from 0 to 499. Um, and it translates, it calls translate. So we say, okay, well, we're, we're drawing our polygons around 0, 0. So what I want to do is translate our 0, 0 point to be some random point on the screen. So I'm going to translate by a random point between 0 and the width of the screen and uh, for our x coordinate and a random a 0 and a random uh, a, po a random y coordinate uh, between 0 and the height of the screen so hopefully my, what I'm thinking is my 0 0 point will be somewhere in our processing window but a random point within that window and then I'm going to draw a polygon at that point and then, because I'm in a for loop, which is um, repeating 500 times, I go back, uh, translate again uh, to a, another random point on the screen and draw another polygon with um, you know, a different number of sides and a, a slightly different radius, and repeat, 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 repeat. So I'm sort of thinking, yeah, I should see a nice little wallpaper um, thing uh, on my screen, which looks pretty cool, um, with 500 polygons in it. So if I run it, I'm somewhat disappointed. I'm only seeing one polygon. Hmm. I think, oh yeah, well, I'll try turning it off and back on again because that always works. Run it again. Oh. Well, it's kind of better, but now I'm seeing two polygons. That's weird. I expected to be seeing 500. I'm only seeing one or two. There's two again. So my randomness is obviously working. I'm getting random polygons and I'm sort of getting them randomly on the screen. But what's going on? Well, you're probably screaming at the video saying, duh, it's because the translations are cumulative. Every time we translate, we're adding to the previous translations. So if I'm translating my 0, 0 point to say 100, 200, 
100 pixels across, 100 pixels down. Okay, that's fine. I draw my um, my shape there, and then I um, the next time around the loop, I translate it again by say 300, 250. Oh, that's adding to the previous translation. So that's moving my shape um, to another place on the screen. And you could quite hopefully you can see that if we do that two, three, four times we're very quickly going to move our shapes off the screen. So processing is actually still drawing them in a sense, but we're just not seeing them because they're off our window. Okay, how to fix this. Two methods that we're going to do, two functions, uh, two special processing functions we're going to use. Push matrix, pop matrix. Push matrix stores the current state of our coordinate system. Pop matrix restores the previous state of our coordinate system. So if our coordinate system initially is untranslated, 0, 0 is the top left of the screen. So we, when we first come into this um, loop, we're going to say, OK, store that coordinate system with 0, 0 top left of the screen then translate 0, 0 to be somewhere randomly in our window. Draw our awesome polygon with a random number of sides and a slightly random uh, radius. And then restore the coordinate system to where it was when we called push matrix previously. So now the translation that we did here is kind of like evaporated, gone. We've restored our coordinate system back to where it was when we started, which is at uh, zero, 0, being top left of the screen. So well, then we repeat, we translate by a random amount, draw our polygon again, um, pop back to the previous state. So now every time we iterate around our for loop, we are first of all saving the current state of our coordinate system, then translating it, drawing our polygon, and then restoring our coordinate system. So what we hope is happening is that we're not getting that problem of our translations compounding one after the other and, a, and our shapes very rapidly moving off screen. Okay, all very well in theory, so let's do the acid test and run it. That looks much better. Now I feel like I'm seeing 500 polygons on screen. Now I'm not going to actually count them, but kind of looks like it's right. Um, let's run it again just to see. We're still getting randomness, so yeah, it looks different. And if I make our for loop, instead of drawing 500 polygons, maybe draw 5,000 of them, we should still see them all on the screen. Whoa, pretty awesome actually. Um, maybe a bit too many polygons. But you can certainly see that it, it, it appears that all our polygons are being drawn on the screen and they're not shifting off um, outside and being drawn outside the window. So that's push matrix and pop matrix. Push matrix saves the current state of the coordinate system. Pop matrix reverts back to the previous drawing context, the, the, previ the previous state of our um, coordinate system. So hopefully after the lecture and these little supplemental videos, you now have a good understanding of functions and methods. Probably 99% of you knew about them before you started the subject. Hopefully you know about setup and draw. You know that setup is called the very first thing that processing does and draw is called every time it processing redraws its window so that's useful for making things interactive um, or for animating things. Hopefully you're able to draw custom shapes in processing using the vertex command you can kind of plot points around the processing screen and link them up to draw kind of like dot to dot drawings and hopefully you may recall some basic trigonometry from year 8 and uh, understand why it can be useful and sort of have a sense of how it can be applied to uh, do cool drawing things in processing and hopefully you also understand push matrix and pop matrix. Um, that's all. I look forward to seeing you in class next week. See ya.